Help anybody you can that needs help. You know. But after the, after the Bible said that the rich man died, he went to hell. That's scripture. That's Luke 16. It's in the Bible. People don't even want to hear that anymore. I thank God we got a church that preaches it. Amen. And I hope your church preaches it. So we could preach goodness to you all, all the time you're sitting here. But we've got to know both sides of the story. Amen. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. He said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus back with a dip with a drip of water and put on my tongue. I wonder why he asked him that. He said, because I'm tormented in these flames. Hell is full of flames. But he said, in your time, you had it all. In Lazarus' time, he had nothing. But now Lazarus is being competent. Come on, church. He's being competent. <clears throat> And the rich man looked up and said, Father Abraham, <laughs> go tell somebody to tell my five brothers to come to this place. Let her preach. He can't come back out. But he said, you send someone and Jesus came to take that place to tell us all. <coughs> we don't have to go there. Now the good part of this story. I don't know, shout that little message down. Because it's in the scripture. Read it yourselves. But as I was looking at this picture, and at those pictures out there, I've seen smiles, I've seen family. And on this, on this little thing here, it says, in my father's house. Have you ever pictured that? First verse of John 14, he said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. That's what he's telling us today. And when Richard went on Thanksgiving Day, I hope and pray you found out that God. It's still a merciful, forgiving God. <clears throat> I tell you, I don't know what it's like to step on the other side. But sometimes I said, Lord, let me peek and see when I make it over. And see their mother drowning. And their dad. And <coughs> but see them bow down at the feet of Jesus. And lay his crowns down. And then get up and have a child. I mean have a child. Go be with our loved ones. That's going to happen one day. But he said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. <coughs> Jesus said, if it wasn't so, I would have told you. He said, I go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And to receive you where I am, that you may be also. That's the other side of the point, what I'm trying to tell us. We either make choices today or make bad choices tomorrow. Amen. And Thomas, one of the disciples, that walked with God. He walked with him daily. He did the Lord. The Lord knew him. <coughs> Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know. Isn't that awful walking with Jesus all them years? And when it comes time face to face with him, you know what I like about Thomas? He was a truthful man. Mm -hmm. People will tell you they're saved that they and cuss like a sailor. Amen. Amen. Thomas was an honest man. He said, Lord, we don't know where thou goest. We don't even know the way. And that next verse in John 14, <coughs> Jesus looked old Brother Thomas in the eyes. He's going to look Brother Mike in the eye one day. He's going to look you in the eye one day. He said, Thomas, got his attention. Jesus said, I am the way. Mm -hmm. Thomas, look at him dead in the eye. That's the way the Lord does us. He said, Thomas, I am the life. And he said, Thomas, I am the truth. <clears throat> no man coming unto the Father. Say it again, says. But I mean, she knows the scripture. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? If you ever touched on the other side of glory, you wouldn't want to come back over here. You wouldn't want him back, would you? Mm -hmm. Be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want him back. They wouldn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. 
But they'd be like that rich man that went to hell. He'll say, you go send somebody back to my five brothers and tell them not to come here. <laughs> I was close to going out one day. An old drug addict, a drunkard. Yes, I was. <coughs> they will have my soul pulling out upon my feet. Back with Angus. You know what my neighbor told me? I went to Sunday school. She said, if you ever get in trouble, you call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Even old drug addict, alcoholic, remember that scripture? That I call on the name of Jesus? You better believe it. Yes. Satan had to let go of me. Couldn't hold me no more. He let go of me. God knew he had a use for me. Not in that, not in alcohol. He knew that the gentleman I talked to yesterday said, I know you, you talk all the time. We all agree with him? <laughs> he said, sometimes you don't shut up. But I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what it takes to get from here to heaven. It's by repenting of your sins. I've been beside the bedside of many that did not know God. People say that's just bedside religion. You call it what you want to. God's gifted me to go to the bedside of people that's not saved. And I hold their hands and I pray with them. And they call on the name of Jesus. And God forgives them. And a few hours later, they're gone. <laughs> they said, you just got that old bedside religion. I said, no, I got a gift of God in my life. Amen. He said, I have a desire that no one perishes. He don't want us to perish. But if you don't have him in your heart, you will. I'm not going to hold you long. This is a good little service. I bet he's cutting up children. Right? Trying to find a stereo to work on. Hey, we don't have them down here no more. They're gone. Them days are gone. Even grandchildren got these iPhones. Come on, somebody. And he loved to work on the electronics and stuff. Thank God for his mercy. But Thomas said unto him, we do not whether thou goest and how can we move the way? We're all without excuse in here today. As we rejoice. The guy told me one time. It's been a while back when I first started preaching. He said, got my voice. He said, You preachers are all the same. You preach everybody to heaven. Got right in my face. I looked at that man. I said, sir, I can't preach him to heaven. And I don't have any thought he's preaching to hell. He's already preached his service. That man got out of my face. Can you believe people are doing it that way? All you preachers do is preaching to heaven. I don't ever hear you preaching to hell. I don't have any authority to do that. Amen. You better thank God. Amen. He's a lenient God. He's waiting on us to repent and tell him we're sorry of our sins. <coughs> Isn't that wonderful? God have mercy on us all. I'm going to read you something here. We're about to close. I'm going to read you something. I found this in a, a little place I had in my... What I said it was. Yeah, here it is. I found this years ago. Maybe this is a song, really. And I thought it was amazing. Because I can remember times. I could hear my mother pray for us. Like I say, we were Hebrews. But don't joke about it, we were. Some of you wouldn't confess it even though you were. I want you read this, listen to it. And we're close. There was many times when I was young, and he heard it all sound. I saw tears in Mama's eyes. And I didn't know what thing it was that made my mama cry. And as the years went by, I understood each tear that my mama cried. Mama cried for her children while she was living here. And she prayed, Lord, please save my children. That's what I heard my mama pray. I'm asking you today, Lord, please save my children. 
Don't let them stray away, Mama. Uh, Mama. Just keep your hand upon them, Lord. And don't let them die in vain. But Lord, please, save my children. Lord, this I pray today. Well, now the years that come and gone since Mama passed away, but back in my memory, I can hear her every day. We were so poor when we was young. We had about 13 in one little two-bedroom house. I could hear my mama pray for us. She said, now y'all all kneel down beside the bed. And I want y'all to pray this prayer. And we all pray that little prayer. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord. My soul to take. I can remember mama praying that. It said, but back in my memory, I could hear her every day. When I hear those prayers that she prayed to God for her children every day, she was hoping that she'd hear me say, Mama, I got saved. That's a prayer from a mother to all of us. That's a mama for us, and that's a daddy. That's a brother for us. I guarantee you one thing. He wasn't perfect, neither are you, neither am I. But we do the best we can. That's all we can do. You be who you are, and God, I'll be who I am. That's all we can do. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? But Mama cried those tears. I can still hear my mother pray. God save my children. We'll come to tears. May God bless you. I tell you, I bet Richard's having himself a time. We already know what heaven looks like according to the scripture. It's a beautiful place. But John saw it. When he saw God come down and wipe those tears out of the eyes, he Richard. He came down and had tears run down his little face. God wiped his tears. You'll find that in Revelation 21 and 4. But God shall wipe away all tears from your faces. There shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more pain. There shall be no more death. For the former things have passed away. Behold, write these things, for they were faithful and true. God don't want nobody to go to hell. If we go, we go on our own. We preach it on funeral today. Today we preach it. And let's close it this. And I'm sure this would be a wonderful <coughs> closing of prayer in honor of this young man in his life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me walk in the green pastures. He maketh me to lie down. He restores my soul. <laughs> For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Why? For thou art with me. Thou rod in the staff that comforteth me, and thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup is over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, as I dwell in the house of the Lord. 27th Psalm, the same David that wrote the 23rd Psalm. He said, I have one thing to desire. That's to live in the house of God forever. And forever. Can this church say amen? Amen. amen. I love y'all. Appreciate you. Thank you for asking me for the doing the service. And pray for the uh, her preacher. He's had a, Dale, he had some kind of procedure today. 
pray that God would get him through it so he could get back in the pulpit and preach, preach Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love you all. God bless you. I need help, little brother Jim. He helped me. Mm -hmm. I love that, brother. I appreciate it, brother Jim. <coughs> Father, we give this day to this beautiful family, this time, and Lord, as the one sister said, people look down and say, put a smile on your face. But it's all right to cry right in the scripture with Jesus wept. It's in the book of John. It just said Jesus wept. But Jesus wept for the unbelievers. And that all would be saved. I pray that you'll strengthen each one of us, especially this loving family. Pray we pray we'll grow closer to you. And God bless Brother Jim and his family. And all those here, in Jesus' name, everybody says, Amen. Amen. And would everyone stand with the family? <coughs> Lord Jesus. Lord have mercy. God have mercy. If tomorrow starts without me, and I am not there to see, the sun should rise and find your eyes, all filled with tears for life. I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today. While thinking of the many things we didn't get to say, I know how much you love me. As much as I love you. Each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. Said my place was ready in heaven far above, and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life, I always thought I didn't want to die. 